good afternoon participants uh, hope everybody had your lunch and uh, the next session speaker uh, dr t sandil kumar sir have joined and he is with us right now and uh, uh, sandil sir uh, last session second session um, uh, sir uh, have taken uh, 20 more minutes that was delay in joining for all the participants okay fine 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 and uh, dear participants i hope that uh, some of you missed it to fill the session to feedback uh, once again we have posted in the chat box uh, of this session 3 uh, i hope those who have missed to fill the feedback uh, you can fill it up and uh, and some of you have given uh, suggestions in the whatsapp group uh, uh, to have a feedback at the end of the day as a single feedback Uh, but as per the scheme we need to have feedback for all sessions each and every session we need to have the feedback that's why we are posting at the end and it is connected with the uh, attendance also since we are hosting it in microsoft teams uh, those who have attended and whoever filling also we will check it at cross verify it in the evening and the third session it is on uh, unearthing needs of end users and unleashing creativity and uh, dr sendel kumar sir Uh, is going to handle the session and i feel very privileged to introduce sir to all the participants uh, sir is uh, working as an associate professor in the department of computer science and engineering school of engineering amrita vishwa vidyapeedam coimbatore and uh, his research interest include video analytics big data analytics intrusion detection systems deep learning behavioral network security and malware analysis he had his btech from sedu institute of technology madurai and mtech from pondicherry engineering college he had completed his phd in information and communication engineering uh, from anna university chennai and he has received many appreciation and uh, particularly in indian express for agent based programming for banking domain he has published a book on c++ he is guiding many scholars uh, with the uh, Amrita in the area of video analytics intrusion detection system he has involved himself in competency areas of programming like matlab ns2 dotnet android hadoop spark open cv he is working with the amrita school of engineering since 2001 and uh, he is taking the charge of smart spaces research lab uh, at the same engineering college and uh, he is very much interested uh, Uh, in image processing data mining video analytics networks and object oriented programming and uh, to his credit uh, he has completed two funded projects uh, with in collaboration with IBM and DST sponsored and the one and two ongoing funded project he is working on uh, one with the ministry of tribal affairs and another one with IBM and uh, he has completed four research projects and uh, he has uh, uh, published papers in uh, 28 uh, peer reviewed journals and uh, he is a very well known speaker across the state uh, he has attracted many participants uh, uh, through his workshop and hands on training and uh, we are very privileged sir and thank you for accepting and uh, hope uh, the session is for sir to go with the topic and uh, uh, and damn sure that at the end of the session uh, every participants uh, will have an eye opening on the topic and uh, the platform is for uh, sandil sir please okay thank you ma'am thank you so much uh, am i audible ma'am yes sir you are audible okay fine fine uh, so my sincere thanks to telangana ma'am and uh, the institution for giving me the opportunity it's a very nice topic to talk in fact in this covid platform situation where we are amidst uh, different technology solutions trying to teach to students the big question is like are we able to reach and second question is like uh, can we do something creative that's a question behind all of us so hope you are participants you are able to see the slide sir uh, sir uh, we have got a message in chat box uh, voice is a bit low okay am i audible now ma'am am yes, i audible sir. now yes okay. sir yes sir thank you thank you thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you thank you in case i am not audible or not clear please talk me uh, and you can have your queries also posted in the chat box because you are spending your valuable time to listen to me that's more important okay um, so the content we are going to talk to you is about uh, unearthing needs of end users 
and unleashing creativity okay uh, so as madam told i worked at amrita uh, in the school of computer science and engineering and uh, i will more talk about uh, how we are talking about creativity in terms of uh, teaching learning process and how do we make it enable to the students this key points i am taking it from the course offered by stanford university so what do they say here is like they say that you should be able to provide creativity by overcoming fears and mental blocks so this is i think uh, each one of us have this when we study any topic let's take i uh, show you mathematics i am teaching you on set theory people will appreciate okay set theory is good let's take i come there from there to differentiation and then to integration and then i talk about optimization and the biggest question is okay am i able to understand and uh, there's a lot of questions in our mind right whether we understand it or not and how do we connect that is very important so that's i feel that they are putting it as a key point that's what i could listen to their videos and understand and second thing is they say that uh, you should be able to unlock the innovative capacity of your team and lead an organizational change uh, see each one of us has some sort of creativity uh, and innovation among us for example uh, if i ask anybody what would be a smart idea from anybody somebody would say a smart idea would be something which uh, nobody has found in the world but to my answer no even my guide uh, shivanandam sir used to say there's nothing like nobody has found anything there is something somebody has found you are trying to improve something to the existing one so what is that you are trying to improve if it can be appreciated by a wide capacity of people you are trying to bring some innovation to your thought process so if you can have make it happen among your team then that will be a big inspiration for the team and uh, in overall what happens is your product becomes very popular and uh, in the time frame the product is reachable to most of the people so today uh, let's take now we are all having our discussions through microsoft teams if i ask anyone of you in 2018 or 2019 okay how many of you predicted that we would be using a team software to conduct webinars lectures and make our mindset to listen to that then uh, most of you would have thought okay it may not be possible but today if you ask this is one of the universal solution which people are using so the innovation can come in even a small space and it can attract more amount of people sir, sorry sir is... sorry to interrupt uh, a bit can you increase your volume sir okay one second one second i'll do like this one second am i audible now ma'am audible sir but the voice is a bit low okay now now is it okay hello participants uh, is it okay hello am i audible ma'am no yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir okay yes sir yes sir okay fine uh, the third thing is like trying to produce some sort of breakthrough ideas by mastering the art of design thinking so what is this design thinking is now uh, people say design thinking as uh, just a process but now design thinking is coming into everywhere right from the smallest uh, programming language that you want to teach Uh, to the biggest innovation you want to do in research people are asking what is your design thinking there the third is uh, will get continued with the fourth one where they are specifying it should become a lifelong creative thinker and you should be a good problem solver also at the end of doing all this creative thinking so let's see some points so i just uh, asked myself okay who could be the end users uh, in this uh, any sort of things that we are trying to do in teaching so one important end user is student okay the second important end user is teacher because whatever we teach uh, that should be an end user like a teacher who will be willing to appreciate our content and try to use it for the community and third uh, end user is very much challenging that is a learner today if you ask like students uh, we are trying to categorize students in different categories we say some students as slow learners some students as fast learners and uh, every time we want to say a student saying that don't worry even if you are a slow learner if you are listening to my class and you are able to attend my concepts well over time you will also become a fast learner okay so the third category i put for my reference would be is learners so i am categorizing my audience or students anybody to be as a slow learner or a fast learner last one is experts 
see this is something which uh, each one of you will will have as a challenge uh, for example if you want to teach something and uh, you want to develop something to the end user community there would be surely some experts who would be interested to ask you why is your concept or why is your uh, thought process or how is your thought process different from somebody who is in the top right so that i am calling it as experts so when i am addressing uh, or i when i am looking at my students i see okay two three students would be experts so this is how i am looking at end users to the uh, delivery that we are trying to do as a teacher now this becomes the next question for anybody when you say creativity right okay and uh, the next question somebody would be is like what would be your thought process so how can your thought process uh, be different that's the next question somebody is asking so if i ask like how does a thought process becomes different today you know right like, right along your school kids you ask somebody how is your thought process different they say i saw all 10 type of problems each type of problem are carrying different points and each points as such are ranking me as one student who is best among the other set of students so the thought process of yourself becomes one important thing for an idea that you make right and your idea is going to be very much different then naturally it becomes an innovation why do you say is an innovation is like it is adopted it is used by more than one community of people that's where an idea becomes an innovation the third important thing which people talk about is whatever may be your innovation can you make it as a, something which is useful for the society so there you are addressing to a group of people and automatically you are saying that it is for the social needs so i am trying to put it in simple ways anything that you make right if it has a smallest thought process and if it can become a innovation then it will be very much appreciable if it is reaching for the social needs so if you ask in the technology side what is all that you can actually ask like couple of innovations that you know one which each one would appreciate today is the google classroom for example if you talk about even the school kids for example my kids studying let's take for studying in the second standard is also working on a google classroom right so the student should be able to post the answers the student gets automatic evaluations in the google classrooms so it's much getting more of a user friendly please try to understand so if you ask like will google classroom go be used for uh, second standard nobody would have agreed with me two years back but today if you ask like you know a google classroom is used in the second standard even if you go to a certain schools and even in the lkg they are using a google classroom so it's not the kids are getting awareness it's the parents getting awareness but in a way the technology is trying to connect a set of users now a couple of other things that is generally said i think you would be knowing the software that you know if you could be calling it as a dulimbo or photomath right quizlet all that are examples of innovative softwares <clears throat> now i'm co i'm coming to the thinking from a teacher perspective okay so let's take i i talk as a teacher and i say okay how do i look at my thinking process right so i'm trying to understand my thinking process to be under three categories one category i'm calling it as a theory based another another category i call as a lab based and uh, whatever it is today you know our question among us is like can you make it more practical now <clears throat> let's go into the discussion forward now why i will share your screen again just give me a minute now all of us being teachers right so the bigger question in front of us is okay how do i make uh, creativity as a answer uh, to teach to my people i right? teach to my people would be my students for example so i am trying to put the first question here subject for a subject i would like to teach to the student so the subject i am trying to teach to my student would have some theory concepts have some programming concepts Now, how do I teach them? That's my biggest question now. Now, I have my uh, thought process asking, okay, what is that I can do with respect to creativity? Okay. Now, keeping this as the question to us, right? Let's listen to this part. Okay. 
see when you say that i want to have uh, creative thinking then there's something called called as create critical also so this two keywords will be this two keywords will be always connected so they would say that uh, you should be able to have a critical thinking and also a creative aspect together now what is this creative what is this critical that's some animation don't worry please right so what is this critical is like when you are applying critical then it means that let's take you talk about a court scenario then there is a possibility that somebody is trying to present something and there's a judge who actually listens to that and the judge is actually trying to understand the contents and finally the judge is trying to come up with some sort of a discussion saying okay this is correct this is wrong and uh, they a person who is trying to judge they is going to call himself or her as a person who is critically doing the evaluation process now when you say critical in terms of the context of teaching so the critical persons are going to be what is going to be a students so when, hello hello so when you say that you want to teach something to a set of students then your students your students are going to be the persons who are going to do the critical thinking behind your uh, presentation content now now let's talk about what is creative now we said what is critical so please keep it in your mind when you are delivering something there's going to be a set of students who are going to evaluate yourself so that students are going to be person who are going to be coming under the critical part i think somebody's somebody's audio is sir i think you are muted sir sir please unmute yourself sir no audio ma'am thank you sir uh, am i am i audible from where ma'am i lost yes sir yes sir now audible okay so what i'm trying to talk to you is about how the critical and creative thinking are connected so in context what i'm saying is critical and connected thinking as connect, are connected so how do you say what is a critical thinking is i would always refer to the people who evaluate you for example in the context of teaching we say the students are the people who are trying to evaluate you so those set of students will call themselves as people who are under the critical scenario right now let's look at the next keyword which is called as create So what do you say about creators? You want to create something, then you want to bring some imagination to it, and third thing is you want to simulate the imagination by providing some sort of inventive powers. So let's say a small example here. Am I audible now? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please continue. Sir. Okay, fine. Let's take you ask a small kid to make a boat. Okay, the kid would actually hold the papers and say, "I have made a boat." now I, you ask the kid how do you say it's creative the kid will say come on i'm keeping some water i kept a boat the boat is moving now you ask the kid okay one more person saying that the boat will go but what will happen when the when there are going to be some sort of obstacles in the water right so that case the kid will say that no nothing to worry i'll just keep some sort of a divider at the bottom of the boat so that divider may be something which will allow the boat to move faster even when there is an obstacle 
So that's what is called as creativity. So creativity will not just come just by something. You have to ask questions. So what I'm asking to each one of you would be like, when you want to make some creative products, try to give some sort of innovation to that by asking questions to the product. Okay. One second. One second, please. Okay. So in conclusion, what I'm trying to say to the people is, uh, you should be able to make some creative products, but the creative products should have some sort of innovation within itself. It can be a smallest product or it can be a higher one. Make sure that there is some sort of innovation in it. Now, when you say creativity automatically, Criticality also will come up. So all this is connect together. It is something like this. The critical and the creative thought, right? Well, both of them will be achievements of what your thought is. So you make a good product, your product is creative, but that product will become popular only when it is being assessed by the people. So there it becomes a critical thought. So please understand these two things, creative thought and critical thought. Now, next thing to be understood here is how does the criticality uh, allows you to make a product? Now let's let's look at the process of making a product in innovation. You would always say that you need some judges to evaluate your product. For example, if I'm making a tool which is there for statistics, then I will be calling the experts who are there in statistics. Ask them to go through my product, right? And uh, ask them to appreciate whether my product is good or not. So there I'm trying to have some sort of experts to judge whether my product is creative, but there the judges are playing a role of providing some critical thinking here. Okay. So when you are trying to provide critical thinking, then automatically you are trying to make one more aspect where you are trying to provide some sort of improvements to the product. So let's talk about improvements to the product. So improvements will come from small pieces. For example, if you talk about the computer that you are all using, today if I ask you how much is the weight of a laptop that you access, you would say the weight of your laptop sometimes have gone to some grams weight now. But if you ask people, let's take 10 years back, what was the weight of a laptop, they would say that the weight of the laptop is at least half a kg, for example. So the innovation that you are trying to provide will always have some sort of iterations and finally you will be able to have an innovative product. So the point that I'm trying to stress here is when you're trying to have critical thinking, try to provide your thinking with some sort of improvements to the product. The so next, one second, one second please. Sorry, we'll continue from here. Okay. So uh, the input that we are trying to provide is whenever you're trying to provide some critical thinking, make sure that there are some improvements to your thought process. 
and second is you should be able to make sure that there are some sort of things that you have improved in the given concept right so even when you want to make a small tool uh, with respect to your programming you can always make the tool to be as better as you want right so this is what we are trying to stress here so little bit of theory will come don't worry as we finish it we will go through some practical aspects then the next is like we want to have a better product so the better product as such is like uh, you are trying to reshape your thinking right you you think okay you want to make a small object so you can make the object as better as you want by improving your thinking process so same thing here whenever you want to innovate and make a some sort of a software or some sort of a design thinking tool make sure that your thought process is improved as much as better as your thought process is improved better and better automatically your product becomes better right the next is like you, when you say you have made a creative product right and uh, that product is not having any critical thinking then it is generally said it is a negative thinking okay so the statement goes very clearly the creative thinking without a critical component it just merely a normal thinking that means you have thought of something new but it cannot be appreciated please understand so only when it is evaluated by some third party community then you can say that your product is good it can be appreciated by a set of users so the conclusion here is when you make some sort of creative products make sure that it has some critical thinking that means you need you have got some evaluators to the product the next is the very important factor is quality once you say you want to achieve some quality then it requires some standards in quality here so the standards are more connected to again the evaluation of the experts so and hence we say criticality will come in picture so what is the statement says is the statement says that you want to produce a person's thinking then you will have to understand how to make how to recast or how to make a thinking at a very higher level now let's let's ask some small question to this what are we trying to say here here we are trying to say that when you are developing something think from the person's thought process for example uh, if i am asking you to uh, make a tool to draw pictures okay to a school kid right if it is a six standard school kid the hands are very much flexible the fingers are very much nice the fingers will move around with the software and they will draw any thing such as a shape but if i am asking you to make a same tool for a kid who is just studying an lkg right please understand the kid is studying only lkg so there you am asking you to just make a tool which will allow the kid to draw a drawing there the question would be is like the kid can actually move but the fingers are not very fixed please understand the fingers are not rigid the fingers cannot float around on the screen so there the answer would be is like you can actually make the tool but the tool should allow the kid to draw and connect automatically for example if the kid is asked to draw a circle the kid is trying to draw a circle even if the kid has not connected the circle end automatically the circle ends should get connected please understand what i am trying to say with you so when you say that you have developed something which is good and it's a nice from a thinking aspect it's got creativity it's got some criticality make sure that you are trying to give some quality aspect to that by thinking from the person's aspect right so to achieve any challenging end right so generally what people say is like we should have something called as criteria gauges measures models principles standards or tests to use in judging whether we are approaching the end okay so let's talk about all this from the academic system point of view when we talk about criteria when we talk about criteria in terms of the assessments that we try to provide to the students right we say that we our course as such has got three criteria as that has got three objectives so my objectives are 1 2 3 and so on so that can be said as an example of criteria the next is something called as gauges so this gauges as, as such will be something like which allows you to drive your content for example you would say that i am trying to teach objective 1 by using a set of slides you would teach objective 2 by using a software you would teach objective 3 by conducting some lab experiments so the gauges are more than one the third is measures 
How are you going to quantify your uh, assessments, right? Somebody would say, I've connected two quiz. Somebody would say one test. Somebody would say, no, no, I've connected three lab exercises. So that becomes my measures. The next is models. See, in this models, I, I was just going through some papers. The papers were saying that how good can a system learn based on the input and the environment? Input is what you're providing, right? The environment is what your system provides. So if you can make a model considering the inputs and the environment, then you would say that whatever you made creative is reached to a set of people. The next is principles and standards that we generally adopt in going through a creative thinking process. So we don't achieve excellence in thinking with no end in view. We design for a reason, right? So here, what is generally said is like your creative thinking that you have prepared or you have made should be tested against some critical standards, right? So let's go forward and say what we are trying to talk about this connectivity factors. The first factor is like, as we said to you, your thought process will be more connected to criticality. And second is like, whatever you are trying to generate as part of a thought process will allow you to achieve some sort of excellence in the product that you make or in the design thinking that you have evolved. So every genuine act of fighting out anything is a new making, a new series of creative acts, right? However, it is mundane. So here, what we are trying to say here is like each one of us, when we are trying to create a thought process or a model, we should be able to connect multiple factors in mind. So what is this multiple factors? I, I'm just putting it in a layman's thought. Let's take you are trying to say that you have made a statistical tool. Then somebody would come to you and say that, okay, this is a good statistical tool. So what, what was there in this tool? Somebody would say it can teach statistics. Then somebody else will say, no, no, I know already statistics. Will you teach me regression? Somebody will say, no, no, I know already regression. Will you teach me something on outlier analysis? So multiple factors come together whenever you're trying to develop a tool. So more of creativity is more connected to multiple factors in mind. No one can be given knowledge or, or understanding, right? They must all create or construct it for themselves. Okay, this is, uh, this is very important for each one of us, right? We, when we say we are a teacher, we say that we have creativity, right? So uh, somebody cannot teach us creativity, please understand, okay? Because creativity will come to us with experience and in the way we, we think around the problems or the subjects that we teach. Okay, so next is even at the most fundamental level of learning, at the earliest age of learning, the learner must actively construct, create to learn, right, okay. So what is actively constructed, construct is very simple. See, sometimes what happens is uh, when somebody learns something, they actually understand the basic principles, but they don't understand how the basic principles are connected to the different concepts. I'm, I'm talking to you in very simple scenario, right? So all of us, when we hear a keyword called as electricity, Okay, I'm just talking in basic terms. When you say electricity, then people say, where is electricity? I would say electricity is everywhere. My fan is running, electricity is there. There is a light on, electricity is there. Now, when somebody is asking a basic question, okay, how do you control the electricity flow? Then people will be able to answer only when their electricity basic principles are known very well. So that's what is knowledge is, right? So, so that is why, you know, you... Uh, I don't know how many of you will agree with me. Uh, when you want to construct a house, right? Let's take you go to an engineer. Okay, engineer will actually give you a good engineering drawing, and the engineer will say that yes, you can actually create a house. Uh, your house is ready for you in the next six months. All you need to do is you have to pay the money from time to time. When you go to an architect, okay, for example, the architect will say, "Come sit in front of my system." I'm not giving you any drawing. Now you say me how your house is. So you'd say it's a three bedroom house. Okay, he will make a three bedroom house. You say to the person, okay, in my hall, I want to have a TV just right facing. He'll just place a TV. Right? And finally, once the design is ready, what happens is the, the architect will say your house is ready. Now, if you ask the architect, okay, what, how will my house look like when there's a good sunlight? Now the architect will say, okay, this is a very good question. 
so where do you want to have a good sunlight you say that i want to have a good sunlight in the hall then the architect will say come on now i will show you a coloring with yellow color now it becomes bright right so things can be changed as much as possible in the earlier stages before you construct a house right now comes the next question here right okay you start constructing the house now the house is looking good you go to the hall the hall is very small now you ask to the architect okay house is looking very small in the hall can i increase the hall size then the person will say you have to ask the engineer when you ask the engineer the engineer will say that you can do it but you should understand that all the pillars are in place we have to break the pillars and it's, it will invest one more money then there you will be worried okay i should have thought little early okay so that's what uh, it comes to the creative thinking process also you should be able to actively construct okay or create something to learn right so that that's actually important from any learner point of view so you should be a creative thinker and uh, parallelly you should be a good learner also even the most fundamental level of learning at the earliest age of learning the learner must actively assess his construction to take genuine ownership okay so if i ask you like how much uh, have you learned a particular concept you should be able to say yes i'm clear so if i ask you how much you are clear then you should say more than 100 percentage if you say 100 percentage also it means that no no you are not very clear the next is am i being very very much accurate accuracy is more concerned to your delivery part if i ask you a question and you if you are able to relate the concepts to the question and that good a right answer right so there you say that you are accurate then next is all this are very important why in the sense is like when you say that you are trying to construct something in form of a knowledge then uh, all this are very important right for example if i ask somebody like uh, what are what is very important in a car okay if i ask you then somebody would say the size of the car comfort level of the car then uh, if i ask somebody like uh, okay what else the person will say it should go at a very high speed okay and uh, okay then last question somebody would ask is okay now you said me three things one is the size the next is the speed that you said and uh, let's take you third one you say is the comfort of the car and i give you one more thing what about the brake aspect now your thought process will ask you a question which is very important you should the person will really agree saying that your, your brake control should be very good otherwise it results in accident so above all the three factors no this is very important so certain minimal aspects are very important whenever you try to do a creative thinking and uh, that minimal aspects if it is correct then you can always own saying that my critical thought uh, and my creative thinking has worked out very well in making a product essential need for criticality and creativity applies to the work of the most humble student as well as sort of the greatest genius okay so if you see the big people right i think newton darwin each one of them you can see in the list they are very popular right okay if you ask like how do they go into the development process of making good uh, knowledge uh, delivery to the world right so they were actually looking at possibility of giving good standards right so and that standards were, were actually were more important because that was evaluated by a right set of experts okay and uh, when the experts have evaluated and they have said at each point right saying that your thought process is wrong 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 every time they went and got corrected and said that no no my thought process is becoming better and better and finally the thought process became a creative thought right so that's what is the meaning of this slide the same thing for each one of us when you say that you are very much good or very much intellectual it means that you are being mentored and you have been evaluated by a set of people so same thing will come into creative thinking also in teaching when you want to do be a creative thinker in teaching you should be able to say whatever you have adopted in your teaching has been evaluated or appreciated by a set of critical experts so what is the necessary condition to the development of a critical and creative thinking as the expert says you need to have a questioning mind so what is this questioning mind is like i'm teaching something to the student but the student says i'm happy and now i would ask to the student are you happy just because you learned something or has it made you think something better so now the question will say sir i understand my concepts i am able to understand the learning i am able to understand whatever you say 
but still I'm not able to go one step further. What is that one step further is a questioning mind. Please try to understand. So when you say that you are trying to bring some sort of a creative thinking, so you should be able to say that you are trying to make a questioning mind. Okay, so the questioning mind should come first with you. Then the questioning mind should come with the students. For example, if you are teaching a student with uh, five type of problems, so that means your questioning mind has thought that, okay, there'll be five type of problems. Suppose by experience, if you can categorize that problems under 15 categories, please understand, it's no more five category. It is 15 category of problems. There what happens is your questioning mind has improved a lot, right? So when you want to have a critical and creative thinking, you need to have a questioning mind. So this from experts, if you ask, one, uh, as you know, right, from uh, Newton, uh, what he has said very, very, very nicely is like he said that whenever you are trying to make something better, right, you should actually question the nature of matter, place, time, and the motion, right? Okay, so uh, this is the key factors that he has thought about. So he said that every time he has looked at problems that he is trying to solve, that's Isaac Newton, he said that all his problems will be more around the nature, right? Why is it happening, right? Why is something happening? So more around the nature, he has been able to work on problems and he has dictated his findings as results to all of us. If you take Charles Darwin, right? Uh, each one of you know what his, his success aspect, right? He has been asking very simple, like, uh, what should I think more and more, right? So that I've been able to correct the errors or understand more the observations that you, that I see in front of myself. So that was his uh, thought process from Charles Darwin. Now, from Albert Einstein, right? So his story, each one of us know, right? He failed his entrance exam in uh, Jewish Polytechnic. When he finally passed, uh, he did not want to think about scientific problems for a year. His final problems uh, that he has taken in the end semester, in the exams, right? was so non-distinguished and afterwards he received to he actually refused to post even as an assistant also so this is from albert Einstein's uh, mind thought okay. now the keyword that we have got learned from each one of us is like you should be able to have a questioning mind okay so what is questioning mind it should be something like you are able to take a concept and from that concept, you should be able to understand better, think, 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 and make yourself good. Then you, when you understand more and more, you can actually teach better. That's a concept, right? When your understanding is good and better, you can teach to the students in a more better way. Now, questioning mind is the second uh, point that I've kept in for you. So the first point is creativity and uh, critical thinking. Second point is questioning mind, right? We will come to all this when we do the small exercise now. The next is understanding the mundane nature of the critical and creative thinking, right? So there, people generally say that both of them are interconnected, as we said. And uh, you should be uh, able to accept one point. If you say that you are a genius, don't mistake me. If you say that you are a genius, then that means there's somebody who is better than you as genius level one or two, right? That is better than you. That's a concept. So when you say that you have made a creative thinking and uh, you have developed something, then if it is evaluated by one expert, the expert says, good. When you take the same creative thinking outcome to another expert, the expert will say, no, no, it needs some improvement, right, okay. So the, the understanding is very simple. You should be able to have your intellectual work and that intellectual work should be able to have two components, one calling yourself as a creator and that should be somebody who is an evaluator who actually evaluates this outcome. So in each one of you, you should be able to have a critical thinking thought process. So I have referred the slides from this website, creative thinking uh, website content is available under www.criticalthinking.org. I keep my acknowledgements to this website. Okay, now let's go back to where we started. Now, I, I, I ask each one of you, okay, um, I want to enable some sort of creativity to my subject, okay? So let me say, I want to teach a programming subject. How will you make it creative? Participants, now you can interact. 
how will you make your subject uh, very creative if it's a programming subject uh, by giving uh, real real life problems to the students okay very nice real life problem hello 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 yes, how will you make your programming subject a creative subject um, sir uh, am i audible sir yeah you are little audible yeah i can try to listen please yeah i just need to a case study sir actually okay i am interested in cases which is uh, which happens in uh, real life situations and i give the case study and uh, ask them to work on it and they come with the solutions okay okay fine so you'll give give case study and ask them to propose solutions it's a lecture yeah yeah sir okay fine then next anybody else i want to make a programming subject very creative what you can do i'm not asking anything technical it's each one of us as teachers can comment on this hello okay uh thank you for the member supported right okay one uh, somebody says uh, real life problem okay right. so uh, madam you are there can you listen to me real life problem which you person who has said as a suggestion hello prashant is sir prashant Ah, fine, fine. So now I want to teach students. Prashanti, sir. Ah, fine. Thank you. Sorry, I don't want to see. Hello. Okay, I want to teach. Sir. I want to teach matrices. Okay, in my programming subject. Now, what would be a real life problem that you will give us an example? Hello. am i audible one of you please acknowledge yes sir yes sir, yes, sir you are audible sir yeah i want to teach matrices what can be a real life problem actually i am english faculty sir and, which uh, faculty ma'am english sir english faculty yes sir. okay fine okay now okay ma'am since you are talking about english sir, sir, yeah that's why i go with the uh, case studies sir What is it, ma'am? Case study, case study. I told you about the case studies, right? Okay, so, so uh, I, so you, when you talk about English, just go with the case studies. Okay, so you 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 talk about literature. Is it like that? Uh, no, sir. I go with the uh, personality development. Okay. Then communicative English, soft skills. I handle all this. Okay, fine, ma'am. You you talk about communicative English, no? Anyway, that's yeah. that is one thing which is. demanded most of the places even now. yeah now yes, sir. communicative english now you want to make a student to learn communicative english yes sir right uh, yes. how will you uh, bring in a creativity uh i just uh, give some situations to the students and uh, form the group and uh, we'll have like a role plays and sometimes so i'll call a student and i'll ask them to speak about the daily life uh, activities whatever so they have done in english okay fine and uh, coming to the personality development i'll give them the cases certain cases okay now okay, okay. now 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 my concern is about english alone others also can support me in my discussions right now i i i have i have actually set of students with me i have around five students Okay. Now, my out of five students, uh, I assume that uh, three students are good in Tamil. Okay, two students are good in English. Okay, fine, right? So three students are good in Tamil. That means they know English, but not best. Two students are very good in English, right? Yeah. Now I want to make all of them to work together as a team and participate in a group discussion. Yeah. Right. So what will be your suggestion there? What do you think is creativity? No, I will ask them to speak only in English. Okay, fine. Instruction one: speak in English. Okay, fine. Then, then 
now now students Thanks. starts talking one person is talking very good other person doesn't talk there's a confidence up and down going so what will bring this creativity here uh, no creativity we can just motivate the students that's it okay we can just motivate them. okay thank yeah. you thank you so much for supporting us so um, this is one thing that is, that's to my experience you know it's it's not a solved problem even now uh, with so many colleges so many facilities so many technologies you know uh, students can be talk in good english till becoming a person most of the time and uh, uh, here i think madam will agree with me right this is something which yes sir is, uh, 100% <laughs> yeah communicative english is what industry asks yeah so can you communicate clearly that's all rather than putting all the fancy words and so on they actually say can you communicate Sim properly simple english will be uh, oh, correct 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 yes suffice Thanks but still you know the students are a bit shy yes to so speak. they are they are, they are bit shy in uh, actually trying to communicate in english yeah okay. thank you so here i think ma'am also knows right so you have lot of softwares that are there for learning english yeah sir apps also many apps also are there correct correct so softwares are there so softwares Please. are basically an example of creativity which i would say to the people and again in the softwares that i was trying to see in terms of english i was able to see softwares that actually teaches pronunciations yeah so that we have that software sir we have a lab like thing so we ask the students to do all that i mean listen to the pronunciation and then again record it practice we do all such things uh, uh, that comes under creativity yeah that is also yeah creativity actually we are trying to uh, use a technology as an enabling tool to substitute your learning that's sir yes even if i ask my student uh, listen to me for five minutes more than five minutes my student will not listen right so you are trying to enable a tool there to make the student to listen and learn in, a, in their own way so that's one thing that i have seen but i i saw some softwares in terms of english where it actually says it speaks about um, literature writing right so i'm talking about literature writing in the sense like you you have a long literature it will convert you and convert it into short essays right. so rather than uh, going through a entire uh, literature for 10 to 12 pages it gets converted into small set of essays so that also i saw through actually um, so that's another example of uh, creativity i saw now the challenge we have in mind is like okay uh, somebody who is actually does not like english or is not able to communicate well in english right okay so now if i uh think okay what can be creativity there okay let's see the criticality is different criticality means like you as english teachers you ask the student to speak you evaluate you say good bad you give them some corrections that is actually critics right like i some teacher taught me well so i am teaching or trying to speak good english now that's actually criticality right now if i want to bring creativity i want to bring creativity to english so what i would actually say would be is like some sort of role plays which actually comes now which are animated animated role plays so rather than looking at uh, what we are trying to say that animated role play will be more interactive they might try to uh, communicate something which the kids will start getting it very fast and uh, the next important thing is like try to bring some sort of creativity in which is more towards the attention attention levels so rather than running a long content and uh, asking the person to listen to it and trying to um, um, have some questions back uh, provide two to three sentences at the end of three sentences ask them one person right so so just just, just to check whether they are attentive first so when you are able to have an attentive level attention level of a student then you should be able to categorize what the student is whether the student is knows english or likes english or the student does not want to study english that's a very important category right okay i do not want to study english so but can you teach me english it's not possible so there i i i'm putting an example of attention levels okay thanks to the english faculty here now i come back to anybody from programming subject 
చెప్తున్నాం so uh, when they rate their friends then you know i can ask them to put them into a matrix so that's the how uh, we explain them the concepts and for english also i feel that you know uh, for communicative english we can do one thing like there are a lot of speech assistants available uh, google assistant is there siri is there and other alexa is available so most of the students have uh, google assistant on their device So they can use, uh, you know, they can they can talk to that uh, assistant, and uh, that way they can improve their conversation skills, and they will not feel hesitant because it's in their private space. Really. Like you know, they are talking to their phone, no one is listening, so they don't need to feel shy about it, and they can practice at their own time. So that is uh, my idea. Is what I generally feel is that you know, whatever is available with you, that is what is is there in your hand, whatever you are exposed. to improve those things to improvise sir yeah please yes please ah uh, yes sir i am professor harshali patel from ssjmc shegav engineering college and i uh, would like to uh, say something uh, regarding the topic which is going on that is uh, communication communicative english uh, yeah. i think all activities um, and that are meant for a student okay from uh, improving their english fluency point of view should be completely based upon lsrw that stands for listening speaking reading and writing and because uh, uh, see even uh, how how a child um, learn his own mother tongue it is only by first process the natural process starts with listening so uh, the uh, the same same kind of words vocabulary he listens many a time and then his brain absorb that yes this thing is is uh, is having this kind of name or in this situation uh, this is how one expresses uh, thoughts so uh, through listening he learns many a thing and then he tries to speak then um, reading and writing happens at the school level so to learn any kind of foreign language since english is also a foreign language to us uh, activities should be completely based upon listening speaking reading writing and then uh, like for my uh, student i ask them to practice this lsrw on daily basis so like they can start with like engaging 10 10 minutes time to each every activity like 10 minutes of listening then 10 minutes of speaking reading and writing and uh, since i belong to an engineering college so we always ask them to be very selective in the kind of material they are using for this purpose so they have to use some like a good level like at a national or international level of quality material so the uh, so that they can get a good quality output also so it is all all the thing is based upon how much conditioning you do with your brain yes, yes. so till now uh, what have been like we are conditioned to think in our own regional language correct and uh, we find it difficult to uh, because many a time student they have different thing in their mind and then they speak different things so there is a difference between the two thing what they think and what they speak and it is only because of that we don't have a habit to process thought in that particular language Correct. so it becomes very important for us to make a habit of uh, processing the thought in english and that we can do by practicing english through lsrw then secondly i ask them to think in english at least for 5 minutes so when they are before their bed time just have a thought uh, for a 2 or 3 minutes what happened in that day so just have a thought in english so uh, these are certain kinds of activities apart from many 
to improve their uh, communication especially english communication skill but a very important thing is that a student they one should have a inner motivation sir one should have a interest in that area if you don't have a interest then you will need a constant hammering by the external forces correct. and that is not always possible correct since because of this online mode now we are teaching having a online classes uh, yes. so uh, that is not having that much of effect on our student we being a teacher we are constantly hammering them but we are not present uh, physically in front of them Uh, so it becomes uh, impossible and to learn one should have his own interest correct. they should realize this that from career point of view from interview point of view so this is a globalized period digitalized yes. um, era so one cannot lag behind only because of they don't have a english fluency and uh, let me tell you sir english is not that difficult also i think many other like tamil you were speaking about it is the most difficult language in the world Yeah. Uh, recently, I had just searched ki kansi la, which language is the very difficult to learn. Tamil was second or third language into that. Yes. And uh, most probably, uh, on an average, we all have like vocab English vocab with knowledge of about like five hundred words. So, what it takes to just arrange them in a proper sentence, we only need to have a good practice. I strongly believe, sir, that we can speak English only by speaking in English. We only need to practice. with whatever knowledge we are having perfect but yes your interest is very important yeah. <laughs> your interest is the basic motivation correct so okay. this is from this is perfectly fine uh, i too agree and uh, i always uh, have one more question in this this is like how do you create this interest mm. now um, we say that students want to listen but uh, students are not listening students want to learn english they do not want to learn english but as a teacher you are expected to bring some sort of interest to the student and say that yes you should learn english and uh, the next uh, challenge always now is um, with respect to the maturity level for example you ask people uh, like me also right okay so when i i used to have my education initial my school used to say that okay you should talk in english then the school says that If you do not talk in English for one English word, you are supposed to pay a fine of so and so. And maturity level is very, very, very much low, right? So let's take it's a first standard, for example. My friend who is a friend of mine would go to my teacher and say that this person talked three English words, two Tamil words, so automatically I get a fine back. So mindset will say that okay, I should not talk, or I should talk in English, as Madam is saying. But that was a different maturity level. But now the maturity level is. Uh, will has to go by compulsion one thing i would appreciate uh, ma with the uh, ma'am's uh, uh, thought process is like she was saying that you should be willing to listen that's very important that's why uh, that's very english phrase always says that uh, listening is very hard okay so you should listen to most of the people and uh, uh, one thing that i say to my students would be is like uh, when you communicate and when you want to talk and you have a difficulty you have lot of challenges you are not able to talk don't worry listen to people it can be an english channel also just put the channel and have some snacks in front of you eat the snacks just watch the english channel the the reader will read something in the news that might give you some sort of connect so thank you thanks to the madam and uh, thanks to the english team who has made the discussion very nice now um why i asked this is like we asked to uh, sorry to interrupt you sir but yeah. uh, from your side uh, i i would suggest to raise your volume because uh, we are am i audible now you are audible sir but uh, just check out if it is a 100% like um, speaker um, strength am i audible now now um, yes sir yes sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, what? Why I was asking this is like we from the technology side now we have a needs to develop solutions that actually enable people to learn something. And uh, here from the social need, I think you should be uh, un willing to understand that people who cannot, people who cannot listen or people who cannot uh, see, right? How do they learn? That's a biggest question to each one of us. One second. One second, please.
Okay, uh, so what I'm trying to say to people is like, uh, we from the technology side, we have to develop some softwares and that has to enable people to learn. Uh, now, as Madam said, you know, English teaching to people who are actually good is not a problem. But people who are not able to uh, have a vision, right? So how do they teach themselves? So there, I think uh, you would be knowing the software. you would be able to see here that's a braille transition software so this software actually what it does is it converts the printed text into braille code okay so thanks to the people who have developed and uh, made it available right so people who are actually having vision problems they are able to use the software and they are able to learn uh, in the text words sentences and uh, again they are able to communicate properly right so this is one thing that I'm trying to show as an example, this is an example of creativity. Okay, one way of creativity is like all experts like you who are from the English community who is willing to come forward and say, this is how you should teach to a student, make them role plays, make them to understand, listen, teach as much as they want. But people who are not having vision, if they want to learn English, how do they do? So there, uh, if technology is a question there, so answer to that is great software, right? So this is a, this is a universally used one, which are making people to learn uh, text, words, sentences, and then they are able to actually understand that back also. So this is an example for creativity. And again, if you ask about the software, if, I, if you ask like what can be critical thinking, uh, like for example, when we did a similar software some five years back in Amrita, we have been going around to school teachers where the teachers who teach to the people who are having vision problems, right? So they, they actually gave us some lot of suggestions about their mental blocks. That means when you want to teach to them, they, they actually have some difficulty. So you can actually give an embodied text, but their understanding level will be very hard. So initially, once you get their confidence on, you know, they'll be very clear. That's why you, you, can, you can always hear comments from people saying that the person who is blind, okay generally who is walking on the road will not hit into an accident generally because especially because of a block on the road because a person is very clear a person mind mapping is very clear right so this is an example of a software from the technology side to say to each one of you in english department or to all of us right okay which allows a person to learn uh, text words and sentences okay there are many other softwares like braille software but this is one which I, I found it very nice and interesting. Okay, uh, so now, uh, is there somebody from computer science department here? Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, anybody from computer science programming subject department here? No? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. You're from programming subject. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello? Okay, how do you teach a yeah, programming uh, language, let's say C programming? For a uh, sir, like, like if I uh, teach Java or okay. C++, yeah, that is an object-based language. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we uh, just try the, to, you know, uh, make a real world environment and then say that pick up the entities and then pick up the relationships and the attributes and then we'll try to convert those things into the class. And those classes and objects are being created and then being identified that what if I say student, then what should it be? Then if I take a particular name of a child like Harsh, then what it should be, what is an instance, what is an object, what is a uh, template, what is a class. So we try to teach it in that way. Okay, fine. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so, okay, this, this is uh, something which we call generally as a case study or a yeah, real-time scenario. Uh, which a real-time scenario, yeah. Yeah, which industry is also really appreciates, okay. Now let's take a small uh, thing and see how creativity can come in teaching. I'm, I'm talking to you as a teacher, how do I generally do? I say to my students saying that, see, all of you, let's take an example of a retail store. So our example here is a retail store. So if you talk about a retail store, I would say to them, okay, there is somebody who is in the billing section, okay, right? 
and there is somebody who is actually in the purchase department. Right. So now the question would be is like there are there is a billing section, there is a purchase department. Now we would start asking to them saying that okay, uh, who are the uh, persons who are going to sit for the billing and one for the purchase department? I would say somebody is a builder, right? And I would say there is somebody who is going to be a purchase manager. So here I have brought my entities here. Right. Now there's a builder, there's a purchase manager here. Now the next person would be like, what are the functions they would actually do? Now somebody would ask, okay, what are the functions a builder will will do? Okay. So next, so what are the functions a purchase manager will do? Now when you take a builder, the builder will say, I'm actually taking care of the building, so I'm to take care of the build generation. Then somebody says, I'm a purchase manager. The person will say, I'm actually taking care of the stock, right? So I would actually do a stock maintenance. So I would actually do here yeah, stock maintenance, right? So the functions for the builder is build generation. Functions of the purchase manager is stock maintenance. Now I would ask a common question. Is there anything like uh, different functions, right? Which will be common. That means across a builder, across a purchase manager, is there, is there a common function which is called as a friend function which can be provided? So you know the concept of friend function. So there, the question would be is like, what is a generate, generic uh, function that both of them would be uh, trying to access? So both of them would be trying to access actually the view stock because this will be reflected in the values. This will be reflected in the values here. So once you said like this, the student understands the concept of, okay, what is entity, what is functions, what is friend functions. Now you make the problem a little complex. You ask to the person, okay, then something called as a Varos. So Varos department is there. So if there's a Varos department, so the Varos department also will have somebody inside the Varos department. Who are the people? Okay, there'll be somebody in the logistic department, right? And there'll be somebody who is actually taking care of the stock maintenance so i'm calling them a stock manager so that's a logistic department that's a stock manager so this logistic department will have a person here calling itself as a logistic manager so a stock manager is part of the stock department so we are putting the person as a stock manager right okay now once it, this is provided then the next question will be asked is what are the functions that you will have for a logistic department what are the functions that you will have for the stock manager? So you will start listing some functions. For example, I'm just putting generically function one, function two, right? Okay. So now once this is done, the student understands, okay, now the problem is not just a small one, it is more because there's a retail store, there's a varos here, for example. Now to make it better, I would ask a person, okay, make everything as an entire program. So as Madam said, if the person knows package concept, the person will say, I've got a package. So within the package, there is a retail store class. And uh, there's one more class, call it the person, that is class. And is this okay? Madam? Uh, Sir, what, uh, what I said was the, uh, what, what, what we teach in the initial classes. Mm -hmm. This we yeah. teach when we compile up all the things, now. Then we ah, give correct. them the projects, we assign them, and then all these things happen. Yeah, then we correct. ask them to prepare the SRS and uh, go for that e e ENT, ER diagrams. And correct. then that makes the more clarity to them. They visualize the things. They can see that, yes, now these are the, this paperwork can be converted into the code that correct. they have learned into the class. Yes, yes. I'm giving a bigger picture at the end of your course, maybe. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. It's just an uh, acknowledgement because for me, as I'm saying, ma'am is a critic there. So if we actually understand whether our thought process is correct or not. Now, uh, when we do something like this, the student as such will be able to make something functional, code it, document it. And as such, as you all know, no, when you actually have it as a group, let's take you say two to three students or three to four students, one student will take retail store, one student will take warehouse, one student will take some other department in the same application. So each one of them will have a class, function, friend functions, anything that they learn from the course to be implemented. And together they work together. So the thought process is really very good. Right? So this is 
one that I generally adopt in my course, which I feel as a good example of creativity uh, to a programming subject, right? And second level of creativity, which I actually uh, try to provide to the students, uh, see, sometimes students uh, do not like to write code. They would say that, uh, see, I, I do, cannot remember the syntax. My biggest problem is I cannot remember. So what you can actually do is you can actually give a partial code. So you say you, I have created a class. I can actually create a class and uh, say to the student, saying that, okay, there is a code. Can you go here and try to add something to the code? Right? So now the student will start saying that, okay, I will have a teacher. So I, the teacher has a teacher ID. Okay, I, the teacher as such has a name. So I will actually have a name for the teacher. Right? So then I would ask the student, what about the function you want to provide for the teacher, right? So the student will say, I have a function to display the teacher details, right? So I have a function. Now I will ask to the student saying that, okay, if that's a teacher, then the teacher should interact with some other management members, right? The teacher will receive some details about the performance. So how can you see which student is, uh, which teacher is having a higher ranking in teaching? Today it's like that, right? The, our performance is also known to the students in terms of the appraisals or class level feedbacks, right? So can I actually see the feedback of the teacher? Then the student will say, yes, okay, you can actually have a function which is for giving the feedback. So like this, so let's take I give like this and ask the student, okay, this is what I thought. Can you think more? Okay, there you are actually asking the mind to have a question. We are saying to the student, okay, this is correct. This is a working program. But can you correct this and add something to this where your thought process becomes something as part of the same person? So there you can actually bring creativity. Here, this one I'm showing as an example to the people, uh, as an example of what I discussed to the slide, making a student to go through a questioning mind. Only when a student actually has a questioning mind, the student as such can actually make creative models or creative products. And that products will be appreciated by the set of people. Okay, uh, this is a, a small example about how I just suggest people, especially for the programming subjects. So the next one, uh, which I, I would like to show as an example would be like, let's say you ask a student to write a program or fill the program, the student again is not working. Okay, certain students are like, I will not write, I, I cannot remember, but certain students are very good in correcting the errors that they like it like anything. So what you can actually do is give them a full program, right? And ask the student to correct the error. So it could be a basic error. For example, I say class teacher, right? So there I'm saying int arc, okay? And I'm saying cat name, okay, name of 10, right? Now if I ask the student or any one of you whether this is correct, somebody would say it looks correct. Only thing is, you are not provided any functions. Okay, I will say void display marks. Now, if I ask the two people, right, whether it's correct, then the people will say, yes, it looks correct. Now, the student as such might say that, see, come on, a student uh, as a teacher in the model, a uh, teacher will give more than one mark. So naturally, this is not going to be just only one variable. It can be an array, right? If it can be an array, then naturally the next question would be is like, what is the subject the teacher is teaching? I want to know the subject code, right? So I, I want to know the subjects the teacher teach. The student can come back and say, there's no subject details available. So this is something which will not come just in practice. It needs some thinking, please understand. So just I practice so I'm able to uh, get the answer no. It needs some thinking. So only when a student keeps thinking and thinking, the student will say that as a teacher, the teacher has to teach a set of subjects. So what are the subjects the teacher teaches? That has to come in the class. So this is something which uh, I suggest to the people. Uh, you can give the program, the program can be correct. Ask them to think from the domain of the problem and ask them to correct the code. If they do it, then uh, that's the next uh, success that you can make. Any suggestions from anybody here? Any teacher from programming side you would like to give any suggestion to this? Hello, am I audible? Hello? Yes, 
Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. This is something which uh, I want to you to um, also follow it, right? In case it's a programming subject. Uh, just give the program which is working, ask them to make some changes. So this is this is not errors, please understand. This is something which you can call it as uh, design level changes. Because the problem itself demands that the subject is more than one. So you should not you should have a subject name as an array. Small errors you can always ask, like let's take I don't give a semicolon here. The student should say it should be a semicolon. If I go here and say this is not an integer. This is a care, right? The student will say, no, no, it is not a care, it is an integer. So this sort of a thinking also can actually bring in some sort of creativity to the students. So next, uh, which I, I want to you to uh, just help me out in giving some suggestions. Let's say you are trying to teach some subjects which are basically web based. How you teach programming subject which is web based? That means the output is coming as a website. Members, anyone of you teach web subjects? Hello. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir, yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Am I audible? Okay. So there's nobody who teaches web based subjects. Can I conclude like that? Hello. It's a big silence. Okay. See, let's take uh, we you can, are we can ask to... them. We can ask the students to develop a e commerce site, sir, which is replicated okay. to Amazon like that. So that is one of the good assignment. Uh, so give them some examples, right? Make a e-commerce site, make a student's website like that. Website or else they can create their own personal web pages. Uh, they can how, how how they can post website onto the internet, you go daddy and uh, other websites so that they get the exposures. OK, fine, fine. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. So we can also compare the uh, websites to check if the for the user interface and user experience. Yeah, that's a very good uh, suggestion. Actually, this is industry is generally suggested. What the industry says is ask the student to run in more than one web browser. Ask them to run in IE, right? Firefox. If the output is the same, then the website is good. That's what you're saying, no man? Yes, sir. Yeah. That's a valid suggestion, actually. They, this actually is a, will improve their creativity because they will go and search for different codes or providing uh, different uh, user interactions to them. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for a valid suggestion. Next, uh, I think people will be knowing about the testing that we do because this is now uh, taking up a very bigger uh, uh, level, especially in the industry. How do you test whether the user is a valid user or not? So here we generally talk about all the security algorithms in computer science, all that. But more than that, people are talking about testing, which are basically behavioral based, right? Behavioral based testing, right? So, uh, for example, if you if you are a user, if I just want to know whether you are a valid user, I ask you to type a set of keys, and the way in which I type, you type the key, you know, I record some activities. Like uh, it can be the time you take to press a letter A or the time to go from letter A to B. That's the next character, right? So behavioral based testing. So this is where uh, you can see creativity in products nowadays. Uh, if you ask me, sir, what is this IT? I have not seen like that. Uh, most of you, when you are working, you know, you can see this uh, information saying session timed out. Right? For example, if you open a website and you can try it, but don't do this mistake. You open a website in a bank account. You give a user ID and password, right? If your password that you're entering, you are taking more time, no? Automatically, it will go inside, but the website will not allow you to show the web page. The website will say that the session is timed out. Reason is the time that you take for uh, typing your characters or you're typing your entire text also is also being recorded. So at the software level, 
uh, creativity is provided here. Uh, common message that you can all see would be something like session time out. In this, uh, which I want you to know from the technology side, okay, I, I really find this uh, website very nice. I think you'll be knowing this. This is, uh, is a very common website which people use in industry. Uh, this dot dot io, uh, which you can see, you know, I think uh, this is a website where people use for designing the template. Uh, this doesn't need any programming anything. So whenever you want to make a small, uh, some sort of a design, right? So what you can do is like, uh, so you can actually use this tool. This tool is something called as a draw dot io. So let's take you say that you are trying to make a web page, right? So what is the size of a web page? Okay, it's the size of a web page, for example. Now you say, I want to have some uh, text in the web page. So you are saying that there will be a label. So you place the label here, right? So your label is right now available. So now you want to add some text to that, right? So you can actually go here and you can add a text also here. Now the, the person says that, okay, that's going to be a logo in the web page. Now you can ask the person where you want to place your logo in the top left corner or right corner wherever it is now the person says i want to place in the top left corner then what you can do is you can just drag this text and place it here. so this is more of an ui design tool but very simple tool uh, i've seen the industry is appreciating when we go for discussions when we make with the tool reason is now the industry says that okay see this is fine but uh, you know i i want you to add some more detail it will not be a problem at all you can increase the size and you can add your text whatever you want now all this is completed at the discussion level of a product. Then now you can show this to the student or show this to the development team and ask them to make a web page like this. I think people can understand what I'm trying to say, right? Okay, so your web page becomes very interactive and simple using this tool. So the, the tool is uh, something called as draw.io. Uh, it's a very nice tool. In fact, if you want, you can use it for all levels of teaching for your students. Uh, especially if you want to teach a small kid also a website design, you can use this tool, draw.io, right? Uh, then next is the advantage of this tool is you can actually create some sort of flow charts also. Let's take you want to uh, teach students, especially with respect to flow charts, right? So there also you can actually use this tool. You can go here, you can go and click flow chart, click create, right? Earlier days like us, you know, what we do is we actually use a nice scale pencil and we draw it, write it, make it beautiful. Now there's a flow chart in design. Now what you can do is you can actually go and edit whatever you want to do in the flow chart. You say this is start, okay, have it a start. This is stop, okay. The student has less work. The student doesn't have to make symbols right from beginning. So flow chart design also can be created here. It's a very nice tool. In fact, more shapes on the flow charts you can see here. The next one, uh, which I, I found very interesting from this uh, from this tool is, especially when we want to make some good diagrams uh, to explain to the outside people. For example, somebody says, I want to make some good diagrams in terms of networks, right? I go here, I can have a lot of network design. I want to make a computer network model. Go here, click create, I can have a good uh, network model. You can see here, right? So the, the advantage is like you can actually make network designs very simply using this. And whatever you want to add, no, you can actually go here and you can search for the shapes also. Now, if I, if I go here and search for something called a server, right? If there's any interactive server designs that will come up here. So I can actually assume, okay, I want to have a rack server. I, I will just go here and place a rack server. Right, okay. So when I want to make any good designs, it is irrespective of the subject that I'm trying to talk about. I want to make good designs, you can actually use this tool. Under this uh, tool, when you go to new, you will actually find this option called as network. And next one that I want you to see here is charts. Right? Somebody says, I want to make a good uh, uh, histogram right, for discussions or presentations like that. You can make good charts. You can line up your colors, you can bring some shadow effect, everything you can do under this tool. So 
this, this is a very nice tool. In fact, I've been using it for, for the project presentations. Next, when we want to talk to the IT people, uh, we say that I have want to make an ER diagram. I don't want to say I will ask the student to make a ER diagram. It's very simple. You go here, click, you'll get a ER diagram template. Now, all you're supposed to do is in terms of the application, you are supposed to go and modify the text, the entities, the relationships, your ER design is ready. It's a very nice tool. It's free of cost. And once it is done, you can actually go here and you can save. Right? You can save it in your system. Right? I, I won't have it in my system. I can have it in my system and I can save it and use it for later purpose. Right? So this is the next tool which I, I want you to have a look at, which is called as draw.io. Right? Then go to internet and type, you'll get this tool. Then uh, next one, uh, which which I I saw is very nice, right? To teach and uh, usually explore the concepts, right? When we teach certain concepts, it is a big question that we want to teach all the concepts. But uh, when the concepts are a little very hard, what actually happens is the student actually lacks interest, or you can put it like this: student uh, is finding it hard. Let's take I'm a weak student. You are a big teacher. You are talking to me for one hour, but I'm understanding only for 20 minutes. The reason is something like I not listened for 40 minutes or the second 40 minutes you thought very well, but my intellectual capability is not able to listen. Okay, just take it like that. So that case, what happens is there again, no, the certain tools become a solution. The tools as such will try to make uh, the learning of the concepts very comfortable. That's my experience generally. Uh, what I see. So that's why I say to most of the people that you should be able to use some tools for teaching. That is why even now in all the COVID situations, you know, most of the discussions people say that try to have a tool based learning you know, because uh, you can create more interest in that. Right? Here, um, if you come down to this tool based teaching, I'm just trying to teach you something which we learn in computer science, right? for example. So Let's take somebody says, I want to learn um, something with respect to <clears throat> deep learning. Okay. So there's a new URL on the internet, uh, playground dot tensorflow. Go and click this URL. See it, it looks very simple. It is just a UI. I can just play with this UI. It's just a new interface. See the creativity of the person. Now, when I teach neural networks, no, I would actually say to the person saying that, see, come on, there's something called as data. Now the question would be is like, what is data? I say to the person saying that data is very big. Data can be customer data, data can be inventory data, data can be anything which is larger. Now the question would be is like somebody would ask, why should I learn all these concepts to work on data? Then I should say to the person saying that data is not classified, cannot be classified. Now the student will ask me like, well, how do you say it is not classified? So I say to the person, come on, look at this. Can you classify this? Or the student will say, no, no, it's very hard. You cannot classify because one color is with the other color in a repeated pattern. So there you need some sort of models. Models on deep learning are answers for it, right? Then I say to the person saying that, okay, there is something called as features. Now the student will ask, what is features? So you say features are name, role number, based on the application. Now I would say features are anything. Now, when I say to the student saying that you can add or you can remove features. Now the student will have a doubt what will have an impact. Now I'd say to the student, see, come on, there are three features, look at the data. Now there's a fourth feature, look at the data. Now there's a fifth feature, see the change. Data itself has got changed. So features to the data will understand the learning of the data very well. Now the student will think, okay, I should think more and more of features to the problem. Then I say to the student, there are something called as layers. Then the student will ask you, okay, how many neurons should I have in the layers? I say to the student, you can have neurons. Now the student, when he looks at it, he'll play. Okay, here I have four. Can I have it five, six? Yes, you can have, fine. How many hidden layers I can have? Okay, I can have many hidden layers. Now the student will ask a doubt, okay, number of neurons in hidden layers, is it same or not? Now I say to the student, no, no. In deep learning, it's not like that. You can have your own number of hidden layers, okay. Is it there? Yes, I can have my own number of hidden layers. Teaching is completed. Then I say to the student, you can actually set some parameters. What parameters? Learning rate, activation function, 
regularization, regularization rate. Then I'll say to the student, there are only two types of problems. One is classification problem, regression problem. Now he clicks classification. Then I will say the model that you created, right, will run for more amount of time. Now the student will ask, how long will it run? I will say that every time when it is running, it will actually evaluate the testing loss and training loss, right? So every time it runs, it's called as an epoch. Now the student is interested to know what will happen in epoch. Now I click. Now when I click what happens, you can see that the neurons will try to interact. And finally, the model also will change. So this is something which I really like whenever we want to teach a complex concept. When I want to teach deep learning, one way is like I go through the slides and say to the student, okay, this is deep. So the other way is I open a web page, I ask them to click and change. Now the student gets a mental picture. Sir, okay, sir please, sir, one minute, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Can we have this? Can we have the, this type of tool for teaching machine learning subjects, sir? What is for it, ma'am? Modeling regression for regression. In order to demonstrate regression class classification topics, do we have any tool like this? Okay, you are asking, do you have any tool for uh, regression or classification? Is it like that, ma'am? Uh, classification for uh, okay. to teach basic machine learning, sir. Basic machine learning algorithms. Okay, fine. Anyway, thanks for asking. Actually, we have uh, made a tool uh, from my team actually called as a metadata tool. That is an academic version. Maybe if you want, you can uh, actually uh, send a mail. I'll share you the tool, ma'am. Okay, so. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. We have made a tool from from my team, actually called as metadata tool. So the purpose of this metadata tool is like uh, it will allow you to take a data, and you can do statistical learning, and it will give you one stop output. Like uh, if I give you a data, no, there's a doubt whether I should use linear or logistic regression. Correct, ma'am. So when you use our tool, it will automatically able to select between linear and logistic, and it will suggest which is better. It's like a player own tool, yes, no? Like what you see in deep learning. If you want, maybe you send okay. me a mail, ma'am. I'll share you the software. Please use it and give us the comments. Okay, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Fine. Uh, so uh, then uh, next forward, usually people have a doubt, especially with respect to the uh, content delivery, right? We do well, we program well, but actually when we make contents, then it is always a challenge that the content is not coming rightly. Right, in terms of the, uh, I'm talking about the overall uh, output of the content. So here, uh, I, I actually suggest people about only general things. One one thing is like, you are the owner of the content. Okay, so don't uh, actually uh, look at possibilities of making very, very top level contents. Uh, so, but when you make a content, okay, I usually suggest to the people, I'm talking about a content in the sense, a content for your subject. Right. Let's say you are asking a content for a subject, for example. I actually say to the people saying that, okay, uh, if there are two slides, okay, then uh, that can be one uh, uh, answer discussion. Right. For example, if there are two slides in your delivery, that can be one slide which actually talks on an example of a particular two slides. So that can be a very good way of doing right. Then the next level, which I usually say to the people in terms of the making of the content is the, the content delivery that you make as such, right? Okay, so it should be uh, very simple, right? Not very, very, very much advanced. So you are, your contents that you make actually can be simple, right? But when you want to give your know, subjective thinking to the student, right? So there you can actually enforce criticality. Like you are the owner no, of the delivery of the content. So there you can actually increase the complexity of the content and that, that can actually test the student uh, capability. So this is um, the next one, which I'm keeping it to the people because a lot of people get stuck here. They actually say that I do good programs, I do good teaching, but I feel that the content is not very much appreciable by, the, by myself first, then the outsiders. Then there, I usually suggest to the people have two slides theory or concept just two slides of discussion, one slide of concept discussion. And uh, the content that you make, you can actually increase your complexity of the content and you can test the student's uh, capabilities. Okay, this is uh, something which um, I would like to say to people. And uh, last, in terms of uh, the evaluation, right? 
we do many things, but when the person actually comes up in the evaluation of the things that we do with the students, because our students are the end users. So they want, I generally do, I'm just saying in general aspect. Right? So let's take it as a lab-based person, right? So what I just assume is like there are three sections to the person. There are three sections to the person. So what I assume uh, is like in my person, I'll actually have three sections to the person. But I will actually have one more section called as D. So which I will say as not compulsory section. The lab person will have four sections. Three sections are compulsory. The last section is not compulsory section. So the meaning of this not compulsory section is, so any student, right, anybody who says that, okay, I'm a fast learner, or says that I'm an expert, the particular one, can give a try on the section D. And if the person succeeds in doing it, within the given time, please understand. So I say my assessment exam is for two hours. So within two hours, please understand, within two hours, the student should finish ABC. But if the, if the person says, I want to be a fast learner, or I want to be an expert, the student can actually try section D, right? It, it doesn't mean that it is out of portions. Please understand, it's not out of portions. The criticality of the question will be complex in the section D. And if the student answers it, or be able to do it, then uh, I assume that, okay, my class batch members are having so many number of fast learners or experts. This I generally do. I think you will also be doing in your courses, but uh, I suggest if you can do it, it will be better also. This will help you to actually uh, increase the thought process of the student, and you will also be able to understand the subjective teaching. What is subjective teaching is in case, in my 60 students, all the 60 students are able to do section A to D, then it means that my question is a little very easy. I'll have to rethink on this question, and I'll have to give a little talk out. So there, it's it's like you know your your creativity can be improved. Like what you are saying, you no, know, your case study that you thought, your scenario that you thought, in the person that you have asked can actually be improved. And in a way, it gives you some response back saying that the student feels happy. Okay, so this is the next one that I I want you to have a look at. And one more software which I want to project to the people. This one, Logarithm Pro. People have been using this tool. This is a very nice tool for uh, teaching flowcharts, right? So the advantage of this uh, tool is like you know you can actually have a flowchart and you can run the flowchart, and the flowchart will actually take inputs like how your program runs, right? People in computer science will understand it better. And uh, wherever there are errors, no, the flowchart itself will show you the errors. So it will show you breakpoints and show you whether your flowchart is correct or not. This is more useful for a student because the student as such can actually design flowchart. Plus the student as such can actually check whether the flowchart is correct or not. Rather than you, you checking, right? The student can check and do a self-evaluation. This is a very nice tool. It's a free tool also for all the information, which is called as Flowgotham tool, right? Which you can use it from the internet, Flowgotham tool, right? The next one, uh, which uh, I want people to understand would be is like, mode of teaching can actually enable uh, the subject to learning. But if you're going to be a programming teacher, right? So teach mostly with tools. That's my uh, request actually to the uh, programming community. So if you want to teach something with them, respect to programming, please teach them with some programming. Reason is, you know, you as uh, teachers, you would actually say that, okay, I'm teaching them in notepad. That's fine, you teach them with notepad because the student should remember the concept. But once you have taught the concept and the student knows the concept, please shift them to the programming tools, like notepad plus plus, for example, because the student will learn the syntax very faster. So the uh, last request that I'm keeping it for the session today is like, you can teach them with some sort of small editors like Notepad. If it is programming where they are not able to uh, copy something. But once you have done with it, you know, one or two exercises after that, you can put them to some programming editors, which can be like Notepad++. So 
that's it so so today's session we were looking at the possibility of how to bring creativity uh, thinking in terms of end users so since we are all academicians i have taken everything from the discussion of that students sir yes. now sir you can you please that. elaborate metadata tool sir can you please yeah okay so what we have done in the metadata tool is the metadata tool is a one stop tool where if you give an input as a data let's take you are feeding in a csv file number the csv file will have some features right so if you say that are five columns you would say that one column is basically discrete another column is continuous then you will actually go inside and say it is numeric data or it's a ca categorical data like that so all such features you can see from the tool madam am i clear ma'am fine hello yes sir yes sir second thing that you can do is once you have loaded your data you can actually select which regression you want you can see the output whenever you select any regression you are actually measuring your regression measures right the regression measures also will be coming and you will have an advantage to compare one regression over other for example if i say i'm using logarithmic regression and you say that i'm using a linear regression for both the things we are getting an output are we right because functionally the data suits for both but the question is which is better that will be evaluated by the tool the tool itself will say that you can use linear over logarithmic regression madam you understood my point hello yes sir i understood sir yeah the third is we are we which, have given uh, to uh, to the data which to which model is suitable the automatically correct. the tool will uh, suggest correct 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 and third important thing is we talk about all this data conversion no? from numeric to categorical categorical to numeric based on thresholding all that that will be done automatically by the tool fourth one is like it will be allowing you to do dimensionality reduction so if you choose pca it will automatically reduce the data set to a certain number of columns based on pca once all this is done it means that the data pre processing is complete then the next stage we go into is we look at the possibility of doing a model prediction using the classification algorithms if it is unlabeled data you can actually choose k means with some other algorithms in supervised with a labeled data you can directly take knn or you can take fuzzy c means or you can take bayesian like that and you can see the results madam is it clear ma'am please yeah so maybe I'm you can write me a mail ma'am i'll send you the software and the installation procedure also you can use it at academic site okay we have published a paper also on this tool in the asim conference so you can see the details also on the website okay so this is what we plan to discuss today and the idea was to bring in and talk to you about what is creativity critical thinking and how can we do it in all the class level teaching and tools um, so i come to the end of the session for today Uh, thank you so much uh, to telemuni ma'am and uh, members of the institution and the participants who have patiently listened to the session